<clears throat> this week I ran into some trouble. But it was completely, I should say this right off the get-go, it was completely not Unraid's fault. It wasn't an Unraid problem at all. But interestingly enough, um, because I had just built the Unraid box and it was all, you know, you remember the hardware that I built it with if you were watching the, the feature uh, during episode 103. Because it was a new box, of course, the first thing I want to start looking at is, okay, well, what's going on? Why is, is it Unraid? I was looking at that. I was looking at the motherboard and the controller cards. I switched out the controller cards everything because what was happening is as I was writing to my Unraid array I was getting bad MD5 checksums on the files that I was copying over so they were basically getting just a little bit corrupted but again not an Unraid problem what ended up happening I went through this whole kerbuffle of checking all the different things with Unraid and people in the uh, Unraid forums were extremely helpful mm -hmm. so if you ever have any trouble interestingly even though it ended up not being an Unraid problem they were extremely extremely helpful like I'm nice. talking the conversation was like 105 forum posts back and forth Whoa. in the course of a weekend. So hmm. extremely helpful. But um, so that speaks something for the community. That's at, the at technical Unraid. community. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. they're very. It's very nice to know that you got that kind of support from a community. So sure. Is. But in my case, what ended up happening is it was my hard drive. This one hard drive that I put in there was um, was not getting good checksums on the files. So I took it out of the system and then everything started working perfectly. But the strange thing with this particular drive is that it was, uh, if you know what smart is, this is what tells you if your drive is okay, uh, it was telling me that the drive was fine. So it was confusing and it was hard to track down, but when I eventually got that drive out of there, pulled out that hard drive, replaced it with another one, then I got to experience what it was like to have Unraid fix my array. And it was incredible. Whoa. It was so, so easy. And that kind of brings me to, you know, it's a, it's a neat way for me to have had to really work, uh, break in on RAID because I got to experience firsthand what it's like to have a drive fail. Um, and it was a weird one, so it really, uh, it really pushed me to learn the system inside and out. So, wow. so I did end up replacing that drive and having Unraid rebuild the array from Parity, and it was just brilliant, and I've learned a lot about Parity this week. Uh, mm. It was a Seagate, uh, Seagate drive good guy, uh, but it was a smaller drive, so you know, it wasn't like it was the 1.5 terabyte with the bad firmware. So it was just one of those things, and I'm going to send it back for a warranty replacement. It's not going to be a problem. But all that said, I went through this whole process of trying to diagnose it thinking because this is my new unraid system it's got to be an unraid problem right and it ended up like i say not being an unraid problem uh, it was just the hard drive so i think what you should do when you first build that unraid array when you first build that system you're absolutely best and i should have done this but because i'm so limited for space i've i just kind of had to start dropping files onto the thing get yourself like a one gig file what i did is i just created a, a zip file that was a whole bunch of uh television programs and stuff and just made it it was like one point something gigs and just drop that onto your array and make sure that you drop it onto each of the hard drives within the array so you see your share be disk one disk two etc so put a copy on disk one put a copy on disk two etc and what that's going to do is it's going to allow you a chance to now run md5 sum if when you're on linux run that command on the file on each of those drives. So uh, do it on your local file, and that's going to give you the, this MD5 checksum, which is a big, long number. But comparing that to the file on the server, you're going to be able to tell if it got corrupted at all. Really, really wow. easy, really, really <laughs> quick test. It would have saved me a lot of time to do that right off the get-go. Yeah, good guys saying TrueCrypt will create large files. Yeah, you could do that. You could use DD if you want to just create a, a just a random file. I mean, whatever. You can make an ISO image. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying, get, make it a big enough file so that it, it if you're, let's say your system is dropping one in every uh, in every 1,000 characters, it needs to be a big enough file that it's going to exceed that so that it happens. Yeah, so good, I, good guy was asking a Seagate drive. It was, yeah. Mm. Um, I think in my case it was extremely rare. But what my suggestion is is that the first thing that you try when you build any array, write some data to that array, check the MD5 sums because it's a test that will only take you just a few seconds. And because you've got redundancy, if the hard drive fails, if the hard drive crashes, no big deal, you take it out, you replace it, and your data is safe. But if your data is being written incorrectly, then it's going to be corrupted data. So then your parity is not matching up with the data, and it just becomes this big mess. So, so that's something that I could have done and I should have done, and now I'm just sharing that with you so that you can, uh, you can learn from my mistake. Just because it took a lot of time to diagnose, that's all. Just uh, kudos to the community at Unraid just for being helpful to me. Mm. Um, and like I say, just 
an amazing experience there because when I had a problem, even though, again, it didn't end up being on RAID's fault, uh, it was hard, hard drive failure, um, they were just so helpful. And I think, you know, I, it just really makes me feel good about recommending Unraid because mm. if you can get help from more than just one community, like if you can go to the Unraid forum and just get that much support, that's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. So now that I got that drive out of there, I'm like throwing files on there and it's super good. Mm. Super good. I did try putting in a cache drive because I got the professional edition. I ended up getting the professional edition. Uh, so that supports up to 21 hard drives and uh, the cache drive. So I put in the cache drive just to try, see if my transfers were any faster, and I didn't find that they were that much faster. So I took it out, and I turned it into data storage. So that was neat because it was an IDE drive. You remember when I built the array, they were all SATA. So this is the, the way that these things connect into your computer. Yeah. In a traditional RAID, your drives have to match not only the size, but the speed, the bus, what type of drives they are. They basically have to be identical drives. Mm. If you change that, then you start having issues with the array. In this case, I've got completely different. I've got three very different SATA drives. And then just to spice it up a bit, I threw in an IDE hard drive. And they're all in one array. So it just writes to the proper drives and keeps good parity now. And it's just fabulous. Just Mm. fabulous. 